Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Downward Thrust. In our review of Overwatch, Blizzard's new IP and replacement of the once mythical Titan. It's Blizzard's first new IP in over 19 years. It's fresh, it's quick on its feet, and it's dripping with polish. It's the kind of game that has the potential to get you extremely excited at times due to the design of its ultimate system and flashy presentation and can a lot of the times reward you for thinking on your feet and understanding the importance of being a team player. However, it's not without its faults. Overwatch also has the ability to make you feel annoyed, hopeless, and frustrated when the odds are stacked against you and things do not seem to be going as planned. First, let's get the basics out of the way. The game is beautiful, and at times it can be a wonderful collage of flashy and crispy clean imagery that can leave you speechless. The color palette is rich and varied, pleasing to the eye, but always within restraint like a good painting that knows just how much color to splash on itself. The aesthetic is beautiful. It's wonderful, it's unique enough to be called original without taking too much influence over recent games such as Team Fortress 2. Those accepting towards the non-realistic nature of the aesthetics will be very pleased once they crank up those settings and see what's on the screen. The breakneck speed and pacing of the game often leads to frenetic intense battles that are exciting and quick as lightning. Yet the game always seems to be digestible enough for players to understand what the hell is going on on the screen. Unlike Battleborn, the battles in Overwatch don't look like someone smashed open a pinata on the screen. Everything is carefully crafted, with a skillful and deft hand, yet never subtle enough to be considered ordinary or boring. Great achievement. Regarding sound, it's amazing. Every sound asset and effect was carefully put into place with the proper balance and range, as to give the game a well-rounded audio score. Being a Battlefield fan, I'm accustomed to having really high quality audio in my games. I was not disappointed with Overwatch. If attentive enough, one can actually tell what hero is approaching from behind just by listening. That's right, every character in this game has their own unique footstep audio, which is something really cool for casual players to maybe pick up on, but also for competitive players in the esports realm to use to their advantage. Speaking of attention to detail and polish, one of the more interesting facets of the game is the wealth of lore available to players if they choose to do some research outside of the game. Did you know that Widowmaker was purple because a mercenary group known as Talon altered her biological physiology, causing the temperature of her skin to lower enough to turn purple? Or that Winston reads Shakespeare when he's not slapping bitches around in matches? How about that Sumatra is an Omnic, an artificially intelligent robot, who thinks she's equal to humans. Yep, some matches at the local bars trying to pick up on the humans. Explore just a few pages on the Overwatch wiki and you'll find tons of cool stuff like this. Dig a little deeper and you'll be treated to a full backstory on the game and information that crisscrosses the relationships between different kinds of characters, such as the fact that Torbjorn builds and maintains Reinhardt's armor or that Genji and Zenyatta have plenty of tenuous love-hate relationship history. The beauty of this is that most players will never discover it, because it's not thrown in their faces, it's just a cherry on top of the sundae if players decide to dig a little deeper. Overwatch is a well-oiled machine, a trusty and shiny new car off the lot that runs very well. The core gameplay loop in Overwatch can take many forms, and it can change on the fly given how dynamic the characters and the progressive map changes affect the flow of the game. At its most basic, however, you'll be loading up with five other people and trying to either capture some territory, escort a mobile checkpoint, or play out in a series of attack defense scenarios. Now, these other players might be gunslingers looking for blood, passive healers, tanks throwing up shields, or maybe rampaging around the back lines, or a host of other playstyles such as static turret players, or assholes who play tracer and annoy the crap out of you. Overwatch is like an ice cream sundae, guys. Its core gameplay experience is the ice cream. It's great on its own. The finesse of its level design and the quality of its world is the chocolate sauce that we all love. And the lore is that cherry plopped on top. However, it's not without its flaws. Number one, Overwatch is not for everybody. It was an interesting choice to have teams of six in Overwatch. Larger teams in games means that the ability for individuals to have impacts is reduced. Yes, this is a team game, and some players will relish in working with their teams, pushing that Reinhardt shield on top of that escort cart, sweeping the enemy team together with a series of ultimates, and winning the game with three seconds left on the clock. If you're one of those people, you'll have a lot of fun in Overwatch. Other people, though, that like to have more individual impact in their games, 
Blizzard has made a concession for them in the form of character ultimate design. Pressing Q is like winning a free lottery. They are high impact, low skill abilities that have the potential to sweep entire teams into the gutter. Blizzard knew that players who like to run and gun, skill based players who like to be on their own would flock to offensive champions in the game. Is there any coincidence then that most of these champions such as Hanzo, Pharaoh, McCree to name a few have the most individually impacting and satisfying ultimates? I'm talking about ultimates that can make players forget that they need to work as a team. It was a smart move by Blizzard to do it this way because they know that they need to offer the lone player something powerful to make him feel like Superman for 5 seconds. Blizzard needed to find a way to make players who don't like playing in a team, playing a team game and this is how they did it and the reason why it's unlikely for some of these really really powerful ultimates to be nerfed anytime soon. Number 2, lack of content. This is something that's objectively wrong with the game and very hard to argue against. While the game is more polished than a stockbroker's leather shoe, the game is not loaded to the brim with content. We get just three modes. No single player, and I'm not docking it for this, but it's just a fact. And the potential for matches to play out very similar to themselves based on the relatively small hero count. I would have loved to see ranked matches at the start, a map editor, tournament mode, and a sandbox mode with modifiers. Things that are not development heavy, things that are easy to implement, and give players something else to do outside of the game. However, what we do get here with the content is very snappy, very enjoyable, and oozing with quality. Number two, concessions to casual players, something that a lot of the reviews I've seen here don't really touch on too much. However, things that are very important to myself and other players included, who primarily play on the PC and consider ourselves at least moderately skillful or at least competent. Unfortunately, aim assist is shelled out to most characters in this game on PC as well. I don't know how many times I've seen a death recap after I've died. Watching the enemy player spray and pray all over the screen wildly, yet seemingly hitting me dead center in the head with a shot. The forgiveness for skill-based mechanics is heavily on display here. I was personally hoping that these kind of concessions were going to be extended indirectly in the gameplay experience. And what I mean by that is the nature of having a team-based arena shooter automatically provides forgiveness for lack of skill due to the fact that you don't have to do everything on your own. Sad to see that the mechanics, the actual gameplay, got hit with this as well. Blizzard has specifically designed this game in this fashion to lower the disparity between skill so that more people would buy the game and play the game on a regular basis. Most definitely a good business strategy from Blizzard, however something that reminds me of Star Wars Battlefront in the sense that my skill is not the determinant of how much fun I have with the game. The systems that they built around the gameplay limit my skill in such a way that it determines how much fun I have during the game. Overwatch is fun when you're winning the game. It's a blast and the momentum you can pick up with good synergy feels energetic, frenetic, and fantastic. But when you're playing alone or losing, it can be an awful experience, especially because it's a team game and like I mentioned before, without the capacity to swing a game by yourself, you end up feeling hopeless during times of defeat. Overwatch encompasses the worst part of MOBAs, yet doesn't give players the tools to overcome the strain of defeat. It's a weird hybrid that creates inconsistent gameplay experiences. If the team sizes were reduced to 5, the game may have felt more personal and addressed some of the issues we have with the game while keeping it thematically appropriate. When you take a step back, you realize that Overwatch is an expression of where Blizzard wants to take their company and has taken their games recently with Warlords of Draenor, Heroes of the Storm, and now Overwatch. Overwatch is a great game for the common player, and because Blizzard knows that video games are more popular than ever, that this was the way to go with this game. To be the most profitable. I love the game half the time I'm playing it. The other half, I wish I was playing something else. Thank you guys for watching the video, I really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe to our channel, we have regular content updates every three days and it's completely free. Just hit the annotation on the screen right now. And wherever you are out in the world, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll see you in the next video.